good morning we'll quickly review what we've learned in the last lecture i told you about what is catalyst it reduces the activation energy the two types of catalyst used in industry homogeneous and heterogeneous uh, heterogeneous catalysts are quite common because of their engineering benefits they can be separated very easily corrosion problems are less and that's the main reason like most of the reactions are catalyzed by the solid catalysts now how to deal with solid catalysis because uh, the rate expression can be different there are many other aspects like mass transfer effects because we have multiple phases involved in the reactor and there is a possibility that uh, you have a different kind of rate ex expression uh, depending on how the reaction takes place on the catalyst surface now today we are going to look at different steps involved in 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 catalysis okay so when a reaction takes place it's not as simple as like a is getting in contact with b in the presence of catalyst and reaction takes place because here in this case catalyst is or the catalytic sp active species is present in the solid phase and uh, the most of the times the reactants and products are in the liquid or gas phases so if you have a reactor say for example cstr in which there is a reaction taking place in the presence of solid catalyst so it's like a slurry for example okay or it can be a fluidized bed reactor where the catalyst is in the fluidized form and the reactant goes from the bottom and fluidizes the catalyst can be a gas phase or liquid phase reaction or other gas phase or liquid phase uh, reaction mixture or it can be a fixed bed okay where the catalyst is packed in the cat in the tube and then you have a flow taking place either to bottom to top or it can be top to bottom okay so there are many possibilities we going to lo look at catalytic reactors in detail later and their designs but then just to get an idea as to what reactant molecule has to do and the product molecule has to do as far as the reaction on catalyst surface is concerned okay so we have the reactants sitting in in the bulk okay in the bulk whereas the catalyst is present in the solid form on which the active species are present right so now the reactant has to go to the catalyst surface and the reaction has to take place there now while deriving the rate equation or coming up with the estimation of uh, the rate of reaction we need to understand all these steps because most of the times these st steps they take place in series and because of that like one of them if it controls the overall rate then we need to really concentrate on that phase okay so let's look at different steps involved in catalysis or a, a catalytic reaction to take place so i have a catalyst particle and i have a reactant sitting in the bulk now there are so many particles like this so we're just looking at one catalyst particle and a that is reactant is going to go and react on the catalyst surface as i told you before like inside the catalyst you have pores so most of the times we're talking about a pores on which much of the surface area is uh, there okay so a has to go to the catalyst surface first and then travel through the pores okay and get access to the catalytic sites okay so as i said in the before uh, lecture before or earlier lecture rather so you have this pores present right and through which the reactant is going to travel right so what it needs to do first is it has to overcome the resistance offered by the environment okay near the external surface of the catalyst this is the external surface of the catalyst so that resistance needs to be overcome okay and after that the molecule has to travel through the pore so there is a different type of resistance offered by the particle so there are two different resistances offered okay by this particular system for the reactant to go to the catalyst surface 
and react there and then subsequently adsorption will take place and then of course, you have reaction and the same thing will happen in the case of product. So, what are the different steps? The steps are external mass transfer from the bulk to the catalyst surface from the bulk to the catalyst surface right. Then internal diffusion that means, so the component or the reactant has to travel inside the particle through the pores the environment is different there. So, the resistance offered by a particle will depend on its own properties and of course, the reactant diffusivity and all right. After that suppose there is a catalytic site present on the inter internal surface right then you have the actual reaction taking place there. But yesterday I told you or in the last lecture I told you that the component or the reactant will not directly react because the catalytic species or the active site will be present on the surface though the reactant has to go and adsorb on the surface first ok right. So, if you have this surface on which the catalytic site is there A has to go and adsorb ok right and form a complex which we may call it as A plus S giving A S ok we are going to deal with this later in detail. So, so this adsorption has to take place and all this is going to happen for the reactant first it can be a mul reaction with multiple molecules it can be A plus B giving C or it can be A getting isomerized to B. So, it can be a single unimolecular reaction or it can be a bimolecular reaction ok. So, all this is going to happen for reactants right. Then once adsorption takes place the reaction will happen on the surface between the adsorbed species or one of the reactant can be in adsorbed state and the others reactant can be in the gas phase. So, actual chemical reaction will take place. So, once the reaction takes place the same thing will happen for the products. What is that? The product has to dissolve from the surface because reaction is taking place on the surface product might be in the adsorbed state ok. So, it has to dissolve then diffuse through the particle and then it should come out from the film ok right. So, again the external mass transfer for the product. So, this is for the product. So, these are the different steps that are taking place when I mean a catalytic reaction on solid takes place ok. So, we in order to understand the overall rate we need to understand each and every step what does it depend on because most of the times the rate is governed by one or multiple of these steps ok depending on depending on what kind of conditions you are doing the reaction in all right. So, there are six or seven important steps seven important steps main chemical reaction is one of them ok and rest all are mass transfer diffusion inside a particle adsorption and desorption diffusion external diffusion again for the product all right fine. So, let us look at individual steps in detail of course, to start with let us concentrate first on these steps that is adsorption, reaction and desorption. We will talk about internal diffusion or sometimes it is also called as intra particle diffusion and external mass transfer in detail later and how to incorporate the effect of these steps in overall rate ok. So, let us first concentrate on 3, 4 and 5 ok that is adsorption.
reaction or sometimes called as surface reaction, surface reaction and desorption. Why we want to study these together? Because these three steps will relate the overall rate of the reaction or actually the rate of the reaction with the concentration in the liquid adjacent to or liquid or gas adjacent to the solid surface. Okay. So, these three steps are going to give us the rate law. So, in a normal case I have only the reaction taking place whereas, in the case of heterogeneous catalysis along with the reaction we have adsorption and desorption both taking place simultaneously. Right? So, the rate law that is going to come up or going to be derived out of this okay, will depend on these three steps diffusion and intraparticle sorry intraparticle diffusion and external mass transfer will be dealt with as a separate exercise. Okay. So, let us talk about adsorption. Let us give a mathematical treatment to this process. As you know adsorption can be of two types physical adsorption and chemical adsorption out of which as I said before chemical adsorption is quite relevant here because most of the times the reactants they form a kind of a bond with active site and this bond or this particular complex is something that corresponds to a transition state or an intermediate which is at the peak of that energy curve. Okay. Right? Now, this particular adsorption okay, can be treated as a reaction. So, let us write I have a suppose I have a reaction that is taking place which is A goes to B. It is a simple reaction isomerization reaction okay, right? that is the overall reaction that is happening. Okay. So, this is A which is present in the reactant stream is getting converted to B. Now, what is the rate law for this reaction if the reaction takes place on the solid surface? So, in order to, in order to derive that rate law, I need to understand different steps and we are looking at the first step that is adsorption. Okay. Now, you have at active site S on which A is going to get adsorbed. So, let me write this as a reaction A plus S. Okay. So, this is the overall reaction, this is the overall reaction and this is an individual adsorption step where A plus S gives A S. This also is a reversible process. So, that is why I have a reversible sign here. Okay. Now, I am writing this as a reaction. Right. So, it may have its own rate adsorption as an individual step will have its own rate. Now, if the, if the adsorption step is instantaneous at any given time, this equilibrium is satisfied. Okay. That means, if the reaction is very fast, the equilibrium is satisfied. And what do we call this equilibrium as? In the language of adsorption, it is called as adsorption isotherm. Okay. Right? Adsorption isotherm. So, can we come up with an expression for adsorption isotherm. So, let us write law of mass action for this reaction say K adsorption is equal to C A S divided by C A into C S. Right? Okay. So, this is the law of mass action. Now, in this what do we have? You have this as a concentration of adsorbed species okay, A s, this as concentration of vacant sites, what is s? s is the site. Okay. So, C s is a concentration of vacant sites and this is a concentration of A in the bulk. Now, the units can be different. Okay. This can be per unit weight of the catalyst or per unit surface area of the catalyst, this would be per unit volume of the reactor, it can be anything okay. and that accordingly the unit of K will get adjusted. Okay. But this is something that I do not know vacant site. So, can I express vacant site in terms of adsorbed species? 
So, when I do experiments in laboratory for adsorption, what I would determine is the concentration of adsorbed sites and concentration of A in the bulk, right. I want to determine this. So, let us try and express this in terms of other compounds. So, let us not worry about the reaction right now. So, let us talk about only adsorption, okay. That means there is only A present in the bulk apart from inert which is not getting adsorbed probably, yes, okay. And let us try and write an expression for it, okay. So, adsorption of A on the catalytic surface, okay. Adsorption on surface and I am writing it as A plus S giving A S for which I have suppose I do a site balance that means on a catalytic surface I have different sites right. So, the total concentration of sites C T is equal to C A S that means there are some sites on which A is adsorbed plus C S because so, there will be some sites on which no A is adsorbed or they are vacant sites. Please remember that here we are not considering reaction or any other species. So, there is only A present right and of course, inert. So, A is getting adsorbed and there are some sites which are vacant right. So, we are just trying to understand adsorption at the moment. We will try to connect it with reaction a bit later ok. Now, we already written law of mass action for this reaction ok. What is that? It says K adsorption is equal to C A S divided by C A into C S. Now, if you calculate C S or other if you calculate C A S from this and substitute here, what do you get? K adsorption into C A C S plus C S. Can we derive C C S expression for C S from this? C S is equal to C T divided by 1 plus K adsorption C A that is it. So, this is the expression for C S. If I substitute for this here, then I get a relationship between C A S and C A. So, let us do that. So, K adsorption is equal to C A S divided by C A into C T divided by 1 plus K adsorption C A. So, this is nothing but a relationship between C A S and C A. C A and rest all that is K adsorption and C T they are constants. So, in other words C A S is equal to K adsorption C A into C T right divided by 1 plus K adsorption C A. So, this is nothing but the adsorption isotherm it relates C A S with C A. Now, how do we know that this adsorption isotherm is correct? This, this is all based on our assumption that A goes and adsorbs on a single site which follows a reversible reaction okay, between A and S. If that assumption is correct, then in that case this expression is ok. So, what do we do to understand or to know whether this expression is correct or not? We do experiments in laboratory ok. This is only adsorption that I am talking about, I am not talking about reaction here ok. So, just take A in some inert if required and contact it with catalyst and look at how it behaves or what kind of adsorption relation I get. So, we generate data in laboratory right ok and try and relate that data with this. If your data fits very well in this particular equation 
then your assumption is correct and this adsorption isotherm is correct. But there is a possibility that A is not getting adsorbed on just single site. Okay. It is quite possible that A gets adsorbed on say two sides at a time. So, for example, you have a surface on which you have two sides there okay. and A is a molecule. Okay. So, suppose A is carbon monoxide. So, what is likely to happen is that C the atom from carbon monoxide will get adsorbed on one side okay, and oxygen will get adsorbed on the other side. So, there are different possible ways. Okay. So, what kind of expression or reaction I can write in this particular case? because there are two sides participating in adsorption. Okay. There are two sides participating in adsorption. So, you have A plus 2 S right, giving A S 2. Okay. This is one possibility or if you want to write it in terms of actual component like for example, carbon monoxide. Okay. I can write it as C O plus 2 S giving C S plus O S. Okay. So, if you start from here, the expression that I am going to get later for adsorption isotherm would be quite different. It would not be as simple as what we have derived just now by considering A plus S giving A S. Now, it is A plus 2 S giving A S 2. So, you can you can follow the same steps okay, and try and come up with a equation for adsorption isotherm. Okay. It will have a very different form if you so of course, these two are again different right. So, if I if I start with this and try and eliminate the vacant site concentration in terms of C as that adsorbed concentrations and the bulk concentration, you will get an expression which is quite different as I said from the earlier one. In this particular case, C s is same as O s. Okay. The concentration of C s is same as concentration of O s. Right. So, I will give you the expression, you can try and derive, derive it. So, for example, if you start with this particular case, okay, right, the expression that you are going to get is of this particular nature. Say C O S is equal to K A P C O raised to one half C T divided by one plus two into K A P C O one half. So, try and derive this equation okay, based on this reaction as the adsorption mechanism. And one more assumption that you of course, one more thing that you need to remember while deriving this is that C C S is equal to C O S and that is quite understandable. Okay because it comes from the both O and S, O and C they come from the same molecule. Now, let us look at this expression. So, I have given you an expression in the form of PCO. What is PCO? PCO is a partial pressure of carbon monoxide and as you know like if I am dealing with gas phase components, there is always a better way to express concentration that is nothing but partial pressure. So, concentration and partial pressure they are interchangeable. Okay. So, P by R T is C right? or P C O by R T is equal to C C O. So, earlier we were dealing with concentrations, now that we are talking about a gas phase component C O, I am expressing it in terms of P C O. Okay? So, do not get confused if you are seeing an expression in terms of partial pressures instead of concentrations. Right? So, you can derive this. Okay? Try and see 
by following the same steps that what we have done like by taking the side balance and all, we are able to derive this or not. Now, why we are doing all this? Because now I have got a different rate expression, sorry not rate expression, it is an isotherm okay? and then again I am going to generate data in laboratory and see whether this fits well in the isotherm or not. And if it fits well, then this is my isotherm equation and this is the adsorption mechanism that is the two sides participating. So, at, on atomic level the adsorption is taking place, C is getting adsorbed on one side and O is getting adsorbed on the other side. Clear? So, because of this you have different types of isotherm equations that are possible and your job is to see which one is correct. So, you know the mechanism also and you get a right isotherm equation that you are going to use later in deriving the rate law. Okay. So, in this particular case, if I, I have been talking about fitting isotherm in the data, okay, you can give a different form to this particular equation. Okay. So, this particular equation can be written in the form P C O raised to half divided by C O S is equal to 1 divided by C T K A raised to half plus 2 P C O raised to half divided by C T. So, this is nothing but or this is same as this, but I have given a form which looks like a linear plot between this say this is y and this as x. And if I if I plot this, then I am going to get this as the intercept and this as a slope. So, I am going to generate the data C O S versus P C O in laboratory and put them in the form like this. And if I get a linear relationship between these two, then I am sure that this expression holds good. So, this is a way to know how adsorption takes place and what is the right kind of adsorption isotherm that is applicable in a particular case. Okay. So, it may vary from component to component, it may vary from adsorbent to adsorbent. So, so it is always better that we do this exercise before we go ahead and try and find out how the adsorption takes place and what is the adsorption isotherm equation applicable in that particular case. So, now after knowing how adsorption takes place, let us talk about a reaction, okay, right? chemical reaction. Like we are going to revisit adsorption later when we derive the rate law, I am just explaining you individual steps which are possible. Okay. Now, chemical reaction what is going to happen on the surface. Okay. So, you have now the adsorbed species that is A s okay, which is going to get transformed to B s. Now, let us try understand the chemical reaction that is taking place on the surface. Okay. What is the rate of this reaction? It depends on which concentrations and how to derive that rate in terms of the bulk concentrations. Okay. Now, if I want to write a rate expression for this reaction, which is simple, let us assume the reaction to be elementary okay, and say that fine R A s is equal to minus K C A s minus say K R, K R dash C B S, because this is a reversible reaction. right? A S is going to get consumed, that is why there is a negative sign here. So, this is the rate equation, this is the rate equation. If the reaction is instantaneous, then that case these two are equal that is a, that is that means at any given time the equilibrium is achieved. So, K E Q for reaction is equal to C B S divided by C A S. Right? 
So, the ratio of adsorbed the ratio of concentration of adsorbed B and concentration of adsorbed A is constant because there is always instantaneous equilibrium if the reaction is very fast. If reaction is not fast or it is kinetically controlled then you have this expression. This is how we give mathematical treatment to reaction. Now, again there are many possibilities like what I am saying here is that on a catalyst site A is getting adsorbed. So, I have A s here and, and on the same site it is getting transformed to B that means this I will draw it in a separate paper. So, you have A s you have this situation it gets converted to B s on the same site on the same site. This is called a single site mechanism this is called as single site mechanism. Now, there is a possibility that another site may be involved in this ok. It may be like this. So, you have A s and there is a site here in order for A s to get converted to B s it needs help of this site. How? Of course, not we do not go we should not go in that much detail, but let us assume that this site is required for conversion of A s to B s. So, it may you after reaction you may see something like this ok. So, here the equation is A. So, in this case the equation is A s in equilibrium with B s whereas, here it is A s plus s is in equilibrium with B s plus s. You may have three sides required. So, it all depends. So, not necessary that you always need one side for conversion ok. So, there are different mechanisms. So, that that is how the reaction on solid surface is different from what happens in a normal homogeneous medium ok. Because we have discrete catalytic sites available on the surface at several at different positions ok. So, there is a possibility that you may have this particular situation you may have 2 s here. Okay. So, you may need one more side. So, there are many possibilities accordingly your equation will change. Now, in order for this reaction to take place I have two sides involved. So, in the rate equation for this particular reaction R A s is equal to minus K R C A S C S minus K R dash C B S C S. Now, you may say C A C is common you can always club it with this no because C S will change with respect to time. It is in equilibrium if adsorption is fast it is in equilibrium with adsorbed species ok. So, accordingly the rate equation will change. So, that, so there are different mechanisms possible. So, the first one is single site, the second one would be is called as dual site ok, it is a dual site mechanism. The scientists in who have come up with these are Langmuir and Hinshelwood. Of course, these are the concepts of Langmuir then Hinshelwood applied them to get these equations that is why it is this is called as Langmuir Hinshelwood ok. So, this is a langmuir hinshelwood single site mechanism or single site kinetics and this is langmuir hinshelwood dual site ok. Now, I am talking about just one isomerization reaction. Let us take an example of a bimolecular reaction or two different reactants reacting. In that case again there are several possibilities look at this you have a site you have A s ok and you have another site where another reactant is adsorbed. So, I am talking about a multiple reactant case A plus B now B is a reactant and not a product. 
So, a plus b giving sorry c plus d or c whatever. So, a s so a will get adsorbed on this and b will get adsorbed on the other side b s and a reaction will take place between these two. So, a s plus b s giving possibly c s plus d s and then you can derive the rate equation. All right. so, so, this is again a dual site mechanism. Now, there are again several possibilities if you, if, if you want to further complicate it this one this side is of one nature say S 1 and this side is of another nature. So, on a catalytic surface you may have sides of different natures which are selective towards particular reactants many many possibilities and in that case again you can imagine things will change. So, all this exercise gives us a nice platform to come up with the right kind of rate equation for a particular step in heterogeneous catalysis. We want to as I, I have been saying all the time we want to put all these things together at a later stage to derive a single rate equation for a given reaction taking place on the solid surface. Okay. Right now, we are just looking at individual steps first understand them properly and then try and put them together later. Okay. Now, so this is a dual site mechanism there is another possibility that you have a s and it is going to react with b, but b is not getting adsorbed okay. even if there are sites present here it is not going to get adsorbed b remains in the bulk and the reaction takes place between a s and b giving say c s plus b or whatever or it can be d s also some s will participate you know. What is more important here is that here the reaction is in between adsorbed species and the component present in the bulk and this is going to give you another rate equation. This is going to give you another rate equation which is not same as the one that we so it all depends on how we write the reactions okay. and finally which equation is there are so many expressions that we have got which equation is correct who will decide that it is the experimental data in laboratory. Okay. So, that experimental data which fits this equation well okay, or other in other words the equation that fits the experimental data well is the right equation that is a kind of mechanism for the reaction. Okay. So, this exercise helps us in knowing the mechanism of the reaction at the same time coming up with the right kind of equation for the chemical reaction that is happening on the solid surface and this mechanism okay, is called as iliridal mechanism. where the reaction is taking place between adsorbed component or adsorbed species and the bulk gas phase component all right okay now the last step or the third step which is nothing but desorption now that is exactly similar but opposite of adsorption okay so it doesn't need much or other we need can give same treatment to desorption as what we have done for adsorption. Okay. So, again let us go back to a reaction overall reaction A giving B in that case suppose B is adsorbed or A is adsorbed and it, it forms B and B is in adsorbed state then desorption is B s Okay, which is formed after reaction gives B plus S. Again same thing this is opposite of adsorption. So, in order to know the adsorption isotherm we have to do the similar experiments that we did before for A and understand whether it is single site or the two sites participating whether it is on atomic level or molecular level. So, so, all these things are quite similar to what we have done for adsorption. Now, instead of A you have B here okay. a desorption is exactly opposite to adsorption. 
Okay. Now, that is for isotherm and for the rate of desorption again treat this as a reaction. So, rate of desorption is equal to okay, K desorption C B S minus K D dash C B C S. So, this is rate of desorption. Now, in this rate equation, you have these species okay, B s and C, these are the concentrations on the solid surface, which is difficult to measure during the course of the reaction. This is something that I can measure that is C B. So, the next step is to how to deal with these concentrations. These will appear even in the case of adsorption and reaction. So, all the rate expressions that we have seen so far okay, are having these concentrations, concentration of the adsorbed species as well, okay. they are difficult to measure. Okay. So, we have to get rid of them or other we have to substitute them in terms of the bulk concentration and that is the next, next exercise. Okay. So, let me summarize what we have learned so far. We have looked at three different steps adsorption, reaction and desorption. Okay. Adsorption can take place on single side, it can take place on two sides and depending on that we will have a different isotherm equation. Right? How do we verify whether the isotherm is correct or not? We generate data in laboratory for adsorption and see whether it falls in line with the expression that we have got. Right? And from that we identify the mechanism and of course, the rate expression or isotherm expression for the adsorption. Reaction it is again similar, you have to write expression like what you do for reaction, but again it can be a single site, it can be a dual site or it can be Euler ideal mechanism where the adsorbed species can react with the molecule in the gas phase right? and accordingly we will have the rate equations. And if at all the reaction is instantaneous, we can write equilibrium relation also for the reaction. And same treatment holds good for desorption as well, where again like we can write expression for isotherm if the desorption is instantaneous right? or and of course, this is a way to verify whether the isotherm is correct or not and we can write a rate equation as well depending on what is the mechanism of desorption, how many, so if are the vacant sites taking in part or whatever. So, we, as we just looked at B s giving B plus s, okay, I can write expression for that. All right. So, three steps, we have looked at them individually, now we are going to put them together and see how the rate law can be derived okay, for a particular reaction that is taking place on the catalyst surface. So, let us start with the same reaction. Okay and derive the rate law depending on depending on which one is the slowest step or in other words which one is the rate controlling step. Okay. So, we need to understand what is rate controlling step. Okay. So, let us let us spend some time to understand what is rate controlling it is easy to understand it has it is quite logical that you have processes taking place in series. Okay, right? So, you have processes taking place in series, then the overall rate is governed by the slowest of all. Okay. So, let us let us talk about rate controlling step. So, I have three steps that are taking place in series. This is more like a relay race. Okay. So, there are three steps or three participants. Okay. Two of them are very fast and one is relatively slow. The time taken by first participant is say 1 second, time taken by second participant is 2 second and time taken by third participant is 50 seconds. Right. So, who is the rate controlling person this one right because he is the slowest of all. I need to take more efforts on this. 
so that the overall time required can be reduced. What is the total time? It is about 53 seconds. Okay. So, if I take efforts on these people, I am not going to reduce the time much, whereas this fellow needs attention. Okay. So, what this fellow is doing is a rate or rather this is a rate controlling step okay. as simple as that. There is analogy between electrical circuit and uh, chemical steps as well. So, you have three resistances in series. Okay. So, these resistances are nothing but steps and the total resistance is the addition of or the total of all these resistances. So, it is like this you have Right. So, R 1, R 2, R 3. If R 2 is much higher than R 3 and R 1, I need to reduce this so that the current that is flowing in the circuit can be increased significantly. Right. So, that is nothing but rate controlling step. Now, let us come back to our reaction. Right. In reaction, you have these three steps that are taking place adsorption, chemical reaction, adsorption, chemical reaction and desorption. The overall rate will be governed by one of these, sometimes it can be two or all three of them can govern, okay, but that is quite rare. Okay. So, the one that controls the overall rate okay, that is called as a rate controlling step. Okay. So, we will use this concept later to come up with a rate law. So, we are going to derive a rate law for heterogeneous reaction taking place on the solid surface. Okay. Let us go back to our equation A giving B. This is overall equation or overall reaction isomerization reaction. Right. Now, if I want to know the rate for this reaction, I need to come up with a mechanism. Okay. So, I have adsorption taking place. A plus S giving A S, right? Then the reaction A S plus sorry A S giving B S, and then the desorption that is B S giving B plus S. This is a single side mechanism for A going to B, but it's quite possible, as said before, that there are two sides involved in the rate determining steps. In that case, the rate expression, the derivation will change. Okay. So, these three steps, they are going to take place simultaneously right? and the overall rate will be governed by the step which is the slowest of all, intrinsically slowest. Okay. So, that is going to govern the overall rate and we are going to write expression for the rate for individual steps. Okay. The, the one which is slowest, we are going to retain that expression and rest all, we are going to treat them as equilibrium steps okay, and come up with a rate law. So, we will continue this discussion in the next lecture. Thank you.